not, uh, I'm not often at a loss for uh, uh, describing something that I think is pretty accurate. Um, but I, the first time I heard her sing, I knew it was miraculous. I just didn't know how. how you know, I, I, I couldn't. You can see I. Um, so ra rather than watch me, you know, squee squirm more than I already have, I'd rather you just listen to this this wonder of the vocal world. Uh, so if you would please welcome Miss Vivian Reed. Uh -oh. So Daniel says, well, don't worry about it. Nobody will see that you have on your boots. <laughs> but I'm just it's listening fun. to you just great. Yeah. <laughs> 
Now, if they want to hear you more, which I think they do, yeah. you're going to be doing something in the, the tri-state area. Yes. Friday, is that right? Yes, on Saturday, April 2nd, at the Metropolitan Room. Yeah. Yes, make your reservations. I think we might be near a sell but call, make some reservations. It's April 2nd, this coming Saturday, at 9.30 Metropolitan Room, 34 East, no, 34 West. 22nd Street, and my show is called Standards and More. So it'll be some of the old time standards that you haven't heard in a long time. And then we're going to get funky a little bit. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. song that uh, this is something that takes me back to the early days of my career. Um, I just moved to New York to join the Paul Whiteman Orchestra. <laughs> this is uh, February of 1924. We, we just finished premiering the Rhapsody of Blue over at Aeolian Hall uh, on 42nd Street. And after the, the concert, uh, George uh, Gershwin, he... <laughs> He played for me a little ditty that he was working on at the time. It was kind of, um, uh, it, it, uh, it, 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 it's not, well, in layman's terms, it was like an initiation of conventional musical reactions behind which is a body of sound matured into dogma, authority, and tradition, the totalitarian hegemony of which I heard reflected in Gershwin's use of the Byzantine flat 13 scale, fused with contrapuntal elaboration of static harmony interpolated through a kind of a, like a pseudo-Afro-Cuban post-avant-garde quasi-West Coast neo-Debussian jazz-type framework that combined modes of auditory apprehension in order to dissolve them into the intangible. Um, sound, which I interpreted as Gershwin's interpretation of the musically surrealistic practice of automatism in which the artistic unconscious organizes the composition, which in effect creates a, like a transformation in the composition's original subject matter into an atmospheric and musically luminous abstraction that simultaneously radiates and recedes to a satirically fascistoid, non-progressively psychobiological musical lens. Stop it! <laughs> It was not very good, <laughs> but uh, I encouraged Georgie, and eventually he, he came up with um, Something Worthwhile. Um, that title, I'm Something Worthwhile, was later changed to Somebody Loves Me, and uh, we'd like to uh, conclude our portion of your evening with, uh, with that song, uh, which will be preceded uh, by another Gershwin composition uh, to increase the chances that everyone leaves having enjoyed at least one thing that we've played. Um, so uh, without further ado, how about another hand for Mr. Ted Firth at the piano?